My name is Jeff Badger, uh, the grinding doc, and I'm here at IMTS. Late in the day, things are winding down, and I'm here with Joe Quimby, and we're chatting a little bit about grinding, and Joe's got a grinding issue that we're going to check out, see if we can figure out what's going on. So what's going on, Joe? Well, I'm uh, grinding with a CBN wheel, Okay. and it's a, a cylindrical plunge grind. Cylindrical plunge, okay. Okay. We run the part that we have a problem on at about 60 RPM. On the workpiece, hopefully, yeah. not the wheel. Yep. And sometimes we get burning. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, don't really know what's going on, so the standard thing we usually do whenever we burn is we just slow things down. That's what everybody does, yep. Okay, so we're... And it uh, doesn't fix it. Sure. Maybe it makes it worse sometimes, but yeah. So, yeah, I was wondering if you could maybe um, help me figure out what's going on or what I should be doing to get rid of that burn. Okay, sure. It's a common situation. Uh, I see this all the time. Surface grinding, too, people do the same thing, slow things down. Cylindrical grinding, slow things down. Gets a little bit complicated, but let's, uh, let's check this out. Cylindrical grinding. Now, when you cylindrical grind, that's a wheel. That's a round wheel, and... Uh, when we plunge in, let's just say the wheels plunge in the workpiece, sometimes it's the other way around. When you plunge in, you actually plunge with a certain depth of cut. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. So if my workpiece is going at 60 RPM, let's say I'm going, just to make it easy, six millimeters a minute. My actual depth of cut is six millimeters per minute divided by 60 RPM. Six divided by 60 is 0 0.1 mil. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. So my depth of cut is 0 0.1 mil. Now, probably you're not doing going that fast, but we just did that because they're nice, easy round numbers. And then you've got your feed rates, which is just your workpiece surface speed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Workpiece surface speed, guys who are good at math, pi times the diameter of the workpiece times RPM of your workpiece. And that'll give you millimeters per minute or inches per minute or however you want to do it. Okay. So okay. we got two choices. So let's say normally we're going at 60 RPM. And I'm plunging with whatever speed I'm plunging at. Okay, so I get a certain depth of cut and a certain speed of my workpiece. Now, let's say I can either slow things down or speed things up. It's a round wheel again. Okay. So let's say now instead of going 60 RPM, I go 6 RPM. I'm not saying you should go 6 RPM, but just for the sake of explanation. Yep. If we go 6 RPM, this guy's still plunging at the same speed. Now my depth of cut is going to be monster size. Because I'm going so slow, every time that workpiece makes 1 RPM, or 1 revolution, that guy's moved down how much? Over here, it was, what did we say, 0 0.1, 0 .1 millimeters. Yeah. Now we're up to one millimeter. Yeah. Now that's a little extreme, but you get the idea. Yeah. Now let's go over here and let's say, I'm not going to go at 60 RPM. I'm going to go at 600 RPM. Again, extreme. Extreme, but yep. just for the sake of argument. Yeah. So let's say now we're going to 600 RPM. Okay. And we're plunging down at the same plunge speed. Yep. So now my depth of cut is going to be real small. It's going to be 0.01 millimeters okay so we got three choices now our workpiece speed at 600 rpm is going to be super fast right, right. Brrr, that guy's right. cruising around right. here he's going to be medium and here he's going to be slow yep. so i can have a big depth of cut and go slow a medium depth of cut and go at a medium speed or i can go at a fast depth of or a fast rpm fast workpiece speed and go at a small depth of cut. Okay. If you want to think of this analogous to surface grinding, for the same material removal rate, we can go slow and deep, kind of you might call it the creep feed mode. Okay. Slow and deep. We can go medium speed and medium depth, or we can go fast and shallow. Now, in cylindrical grinding, none of these are going to change your material removal rate. None of these are going to change your cycle time. Cycle time is going to be the same whether you go at 600 RPM or 60 RPM. You're yep. still going to go from there yep. to there 
in the same time, but it's really going to change your grinding conditions. Okay. So over here, we'll call this the slow and deep region. Okay. So you can either grind slow and deep. Yeah. You can grind medium, medium, and medium. Or you can grind fast and shallow. Now, all of these give very different conditions, and there are two factors that affect this. Number one is, if I go slow and deep, I get a very long arc length, because I got a big long cut, kind of like creep feed grinding. Yeah. So let's say I get six grits in the action. It's not going to be six, but let's just say that for the picture. Yeah. When I go medium, let's say we've only got three grits in the action, because I have a small depth of cut and a smaller arc mm -hmm. length. And let's say we got the super fast and shallow grind, maybe we only got one grit in the action. Now we're doing the same amount of work in all three cases, we haven't changed our cycle time. But in this case, I got six grits doing the work, here I got three grits doing the work, and here I just got one grit doing the work. So the forces on this guy are going to be real big, forces on this guy, are, these guys are going to be medium, and the forces on these guys are going to be small. Makes sense. Yep. Okay. So this guy is going to self-sharpen not too well because we got small forces on them. The not grits are not going to break yeah. out of the bond material. They're not going to fracture. Power is going to go up. This guy is going to self-sharpen too well probably because, man, we got a big force acting that guy. We're going to bust him out. Yep. This guy is going to be somewhere in between. If you don't self-sharpen well, you tend to generate more heat. So there's reason one, reason number one why this guy is going to generate more heat because these guys aren't going to self-sharpen well. Okay. Reason number two is if we got six grits in the action as opposed to one, what is our chip thickness or chip load or aggressiveness going to be? Are we going to take a bigger chip here or a bigger chip with the fast and shallow, would you say? I would think you'd take a bigger chip over here. Yeah. You've got to take a big monster chip with this one little grit, so he's going to really dig in deep. Yeah. Take a big cut, we form a chip, we don't generate too much heat. These guys, we form a chip, but in the process, they rub and they rub and they rub, so rubbing generates a lot of heat. Okay. Reason number two, we generate heat. So we got more heat for two reasons over here. Finally, there's reason number three. How much time are we going to spend in the grinding zone? Time in the hot zone. Now this is the hot zone. This is where all the action's going on. Yep. Things are hot here. Time in the hot zone. Now here our arc length is long. Perfect long arc. Slow, right. Because we got a big depth of cut. Yeah. Here our arc length is short. Now the time in the hot zone is my arc length in millimeters or inches divided by, by my workpiece surface velocity in millimeters per second, let's say. Okay. So that'll give me the time in the hot zone in seconds. Yep. So let's take a look at this guy. This guy's got a long arc length. This guy's got a short one. So based on that, who's going to spend more time in the hot zone? So that's reason number one, more time in hot zone. This guy's going at a slow RPM and this guy's going fast. So this guy's going real slow. This guy's going fast. So who's got a, a slower workpiece velocity? Slower workpiece velocity would be this one. This guy. So he's got a slower workpiece velocity here. So this guy has a long arc length and a slow workpiece velocity Big number divided by a small number is a super big super number. Big. Yeah. So we got the super big time in seconds in yeah. the hot zone. If we spend more time in the hot zone, what's going to happen to the temperature on a little point there? I would guess it goes up. Yeah, so if you're a little point right here and you're cruising through, here I come, oh, I'm in the short hot zone a short time. I'm getting hot, but I'm in and out. Here I'm cruising around, I'm in the hot zone, a long time, a long time, a long time. Okay. okay. An analogy is this, if I uh, take a lighter and I can either pass my hand over the lighter real slow, 
Not good. Not good. No. I can either pass the my hand over the lighter real fast. Yep. Better. Yep. Right? So this is my slow lighter analogy. This is my fast lighter analogy. So yeah. that is reason number three. Where were we here? We got reason number two. Reason number one is this guy's going to generate more heat because he doesn't self-sharpen well. Right. Number two, this guy's going to generate more heat because the grits rub a lot. Right. And number three, he's not necessarily going to generate more heat for reason number three, but the temperature is going to be higher because time in the hot zone. In the hot zone. Yeah. So we got three things working against us. Heat and heat and time in the hot zone. Yeah. So a common misconception people have, or maybe I can just ask you, if I want to reduce temperatures, what should I do with my workpiece speed? Increase it. There you go. Speed it up. Yeah. And that's not Which what people not, do. Not what we do. People yeah, slow do. it down yeah. and temperatures get worse. Now there's always a drawback. The one drawback will be, if the grits are digging deep, what's gonna to happen to my surface finish? It's gonna get rougher, or could get rougher if you go too aggressive probably. Yep, right. yep. And if my grits are digging deep, what's probably gonna to happen to my wheel wear? It's probably gonna self sharpen itself. Self sharpen, which is kind of good, yeah. but also what's gonna happen to my- be steady. And right. my form is probably gonna wear away a little more quickly, so we're yeah. probably gonna get more wheel wear yeah but your issue is not wheel wear it, it's, it's burn, it's burn. Yeah. speed things up you'll be okay okay if uh you're worried about surface finish spark out you'll get that in check but during roughing uh, if we got burn issues let's crank up that workpiece rpm so uh, would you say i go from 60 to 600 or should i just that's kind like of a, that's kind of extreme 90 or 120 something like that to start out yeah let's try 60 to 90 okay. see what happens okay. Go 60 to 100. Okay. Don't go 60 to 600. Okay. That was just for explanation. But yep. Okay. Moral of the story is speed things up. You know, play around with it. See how fast you want to go. But uh, in general, if you got burn, you want to speed things up. Okay. Thank Makes you. Makes sense. Yep. Yeah. All right. Appreciate Thank you. It.